Hey everyone, this is Day Trader Rockstar, and I am doing this live, in person, here with Dawid at the uh, office, Day Trading Radio World Headquarters here in Nyack, New York. We're going to do an updated video, a midweek updated video on HPS setups and uh, market conditions and everything that goes along with that. We're going to start off just taking a look at the, oh, and actually I have 12 setups here, 12, uh, re, sto you know, 12 stocks we're going to go over, and some good setups for you too, so not, not to leave that out. Um... Going into this week, we were taking a look at this initial pattern of playing out. It's not the um, you know the textbook channel. Normally, we look for steeper channels, either a downward channel or an upward channel. This channel is is definitely an upward channel. You know, we got a series of higher lows, and higher highs, and uh, we're going to keep these pivot areas in in check. You know, we have a definite channel. It's amazing how sometimes you get that perfect symmetrical, perfect uh, you know uh, channel playing out. On so many things, and so we're looking at this this upper trend line, which hasn't been really officially tagged. So I'm looking at that, to, you know, possibly as a good initial target for the market, um, which would qualify us for a couple of different things. It would break us out to new highs. Would probably take out some of the stops that are you know that are lined up above this level, and it gives us an opportunity to push back into this channel. Um, but the market has been, you know, you know, playing. Keying in off of all the comments coming out of the Fed right now, the uh, the tapering, the Fed uh, minutes behind us, or the Fed comments behind us. Really, the market is really going to be focused on the jobs report this Friday, because even in the Fed comments today, uh, they you know specific, specifically mention that the you know we're you know everything is based off an employment rate and interest rates, and unemployment rate six point five percent. Is the uh, is that level that they're paying attention to? So everyone's going to be paying attention to the unemployment rate uh, this weekend. We might see a surprise, you know, and that surprise could come. You know, we don't know the ins and outs of how this stuff is reported and if it's even reported in a in a way where it's even accurate. You know, there's there's it's it's weird. It's it's like you know it's they they talk about too big to fail, but I I sometimes say too big to track. You know, how do you even track unemployment and uh, employment? You know, it's it's really it's not really a, uh, you know, it's, it's you take it for what it is, basically. And um, as jobs disappear, you know, just similar, you know, very similar situation as shares disappear in a market or in a stock as they buy back shares, it's almost like buying back jobs. You know, jobs could disappear and it means that, you know, there's, you know, the, the, what I'm trying to say is these numbers are not 100% accurate. And when it comes down to it, a lower lower employment rate could you know, could not mean that there's more people getting jobs out there. There just might be less jobs available or less people looking for them or some some other weird thing that's happening out there just not being recorded properly. So I think that the potential of this, uh, you know, the unemployment rate to drop is there. I honestly do. And I think that's going to be the spook in the market or what's going to spook the market. Um... So with that, the Friday is key. Now tomorrow we have, you know, market has been kind of grinding out here. Not much going on. We take a look at the daily. We definitely got a roll over here, you know. And this is a negative for myself. We start to break down under 80. We start to spread out a little. We had the 60-minute uh, chart, which is very choppy today. I mean, look at this. 60-minute chart t showed me something a little bit different. You know, we we had this important channel leading up to this, uh, and we saw some. Volatility. We try to get a breakout, and then we fail that breakout and push back into it. This is classic, absolutely classic for what I see sometimes. Channels, sideways channels, upward channels, and downward channels. Three different ways to trade. The, you know, three different things we look for. Sideways, you know, sideways channels. So many times I look for that that breakout and then that failure and the breakdown, or the breakdown and the reversal up. You know, that's stupid. These these patterns, the upside channel, you know, we know that usually if you can get a, a short up here, you have a better chance of a bigger breakdown, and if you get a long down here, you have a better chance of a larger move that way. Um, so we really concentrate, you know, I'm more of a buy side player anyway. I concentrate on the pullbacks and quality stocks. When we come to these sideways channels, I get, you know, I tend to just wait for my setup, meaning. Hey, you know, this is something I'd rather not be a part of. I've seen it years and years of this kind of crap. And, 
you know, in the beginning of my career trading, I used to chase this. I used to be one of the people who used to buy the breakouts and then you, you see the failures. Now I'm more tend to buy the weakness, especially in quality, and look at the overreaction as we saw in Visa and MasterCard today. Um, but again, that's all, you know, that's all going to play out in front of us. Um, 60 minute chart ended on, uh, you know, again, we played the, the closing print video and you can see tremendous sell side and balances. And look at this. Look at the action today. Five minute chart. We started off today, last day of the month. A little push up here. Then we kind of drifted down into the, the, the number. And then we got an initial spike, the first follow, you know, the first fade, and then the follow through. So, you know, the initial move, the counter trend, and then the counter trend. We always talk about the three. And then at the end of the day, this is pretty serious. Take a look at this. It's pretty serious selling in the market. And that was really out, you know, pointed out to uh, Mr. Mr. Top Stoop. Uh, step. That was a joke. <laughs> you know, Rockstar Radio. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Let me chew my ice. Let me make this more professional and chew, chew some ice on the mic. Um, five minute chart got oversold. We'll see what happens tomorrow morning. But let's take a look at some stocks setting up. You know, we know that the markets are going to do what they're going to do. It's important to, you know, continue to do what we're doing. And we're kicking ass. Um, we, what, we, what, what do we even start with here? You know, what do we, where do I even begin? We start off on Monday, maybe even last Friday. I mean, Monday, we talked about some, a couple of great setups. Let's just go over these great setups. Ann Taylor. And Taylor made its uh, made its move today, but again, recognizing quality names, underlying trend line. What we talk about is the HPS methodology. And the HPS methodology really is developed with five basic indicators, and the object here is to really get a risk reward trade. Uh, recognizing the patterns important, and not getting over overly uh, you know complicated when we talk about patterns. Patterns are developed by you know, just the same thing over and over again. What do we see mostly in this market? Patterns that, you know, channels, um, flags. In some cases, we see inverted slanted, inverted head and shoulders patterns, the W patterns, and, uh, and head and shoulders patterns, but mainly, and even some wedges. And these are the main, mainly the patterns I look for, but mainly I look for those flags and those those trending stocks and understand that it's a quality name and we're pulling back into a quality name and most likely... There's going to be value found on a pullback and a good name, and you're going to, you know, so if you could actually take advantage of a pullback without getting stopped out, because there's, you never really can, you know, you could get a little flush, and that's, you know, just all about how you take your entries on there. And for me, I like to scale in and not be too exposed, and eventually have a good trade. And it doesn't matter if you're taking a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. What matters is. Um, that you're doing the right thing because it all translates into a positive uh, a trade. You know, if you could do it with a hundred dollars, you could do it with a thousand dollars. And I like to show that you could do it with a small amount of money and make a good profit each month. And if you want to, you know, push the push the envelope, you could take as much as you want. So there's a reason why I, I do things the way I do with on the, on the uh, on the station because it's important to you know, not be affected by the emotions of the of the, of the trade, but also you know, take advantage of the things and seeing how it react. You know, seeing how everything adds up. So anyway, here's uh, Ann Taylor, and again a classic example of an HPS setup: an oversold stochastic, underlying trend line, a moving average, and a recognizable pattern. It's four out of five here, and a flag inside of that. You know, really a a, a pure HPS setup. And the truth was, I was a little nervous for it for a second because you expect things to pop, but if you take a look at that flag. Your H really HPS setup here comes right when that when we break that time frame down, and you can see even a better one, two, three pattern, three pivot areas, and then you trade four and five, boom, and then you're off to the races. So we kind of you know hung in there, got the pop, took profits in it today, and uh, you know called a day on that. But it was a great great setup, and Taylor, um, we started off on that on. Uh, Monday, you know, that's where we uh, identified that because I was on the HPS video on Monday. CBS also. CBS was a nice flag, and the CBS also had a uh, good earnings today. We're going to have to make some money on that tomorrow. 
um, not CNS, CBS. And again, you know, the reason I looked at this one is because we have a classic textbook flag here holding that 20 period moving average. Did have a little blackout issue. We recognize that uh, channel we oversold here. This was really key here is once we get oversold on the 60 inside that recognizable pattern. Some other things playing out the divergences, price versus stochastic divergence. Uh, playing out pretty good, and we're looking for that breakout, which we will get tomorrow morning. So we'll have profits on that tomorrow. Apple, we crushed Apple earlier this week. You know, just on 15 shares, we got uh, 12 points on that AAPL, and and Apple is such a good stock to um, you know take on those oversold 60-minute charts. Here's the <laughs> oversold 60 here. Um, just a nice pop. We're not even going to talk about that one because I'm not looking at. Them. I'm looking at more of the the classic quality names on the HPS 25 which we introduced this week Brinker EAT this was just an organized attack on this stock for me I said all right Brinker EAT great company you know uh, the pullback was a little extended but I didn't believe it you know I said you know what we need to just have an organized entry we're over getting oversold we're going to start our entry off of this trend line. Yeah, it broke through, but we're getting oversold. And we, we pay attention more to stochastics than trend lines. When they both line up perfectly, you have to take it. But if you're in too deep, always on your first position, some cases a, a little smackdown will shake you out of that position. But it never really broke down through the previous lows. And I was able to add to that and feel better about my entry there. And again, that 60-minute, look at, look at the reaction off of that. I mean, today, you had a five, six, five, four-day rally. So, again, great trade this week on that, 86 cents on that. And uh, the list continues to go on and on. Um, let's take a look at some of the other ones that we're looking at. We talked about Monsanto. Well, Monsanto ended up taking that off for a little loss today because it started breaking out, but not before we had a little profit yesterday uh, buying into that weakness. And then today... You know, I said, well, you know, probably a better time to watch this thing off the 200 period moving average. So I ended up taking it off. Um, and now we're at the 200 period moving average. So we're going to come back and revisit this one tomorrow. So I want to watch this tomorrow. I don't know if I'm fully comfortable yet uh, taking this one. This is a classic example of that channel breakout and that retracement. And now we have that. And this could pop or chop around here for a few days before moving back up. But it is, you know, we're on a 200. Um, I'm out of it now, but it doesn't look it doesn't look half bad. Dollar Tree DLTR, rock and roll baby, perfect flag, oversold, profit, took profits on it. Again, once you get that, once you see that daily setup, you easily go to that 60 minute, recognize your one two three pattern, taking the three pivot areas, and then straight in four and five. Um, as it comes down here, 200 period moving average, and the, the bigger move. We always know that the big move out of a downward flag is off the lower trend line and usually get that breakout. Once you get that breakout, you sell into it because what is the 60 minutes a little overbought? Wouldn't be surprised to see a pullback. That's how the market moves. Dollar Tree, DLTR. Um, Monsanto, Panera still looks okay. So Verizon today, you know, that's one of the key stocks coming up for the next couple of days, Verizon. Look at this pullback on Verizon. First of all, take a look at the daily. Now, we've been trading Verizon a lot. First time we took Verizon, it was off of this little flag. We got a nice pop. We sold in. We sold, you know, got profits on. Now, it's, I've been waiting for it to pull back, and I've been, you know, seeing that crossover in the daily. It is kind of a little weak here. And that 60 minute chart is something I was paying attention to, where I wanted to really uh, pay attention to that six, what was that, 49.50 area. We came down there kind of, market had some severe selling in it at the end of the day. So it's just like, you know, I'm going to put that out, uh, out there that there was some ser severe selling. Um, so we might have had a little flush here. But look at this. I mean, you know the risk reward is in your favor right now because of the, you know, that that 60 minute uh, slam here. Even if we get a gap down tomorrow. I still like this one a lot, you know. We're due for a, you know a good 60-minute candle to the upside, and we're right around this level. And you know the problem is, you know, there's not really a problem, you know. If 
it's not that that's not that bad you know just uh, scaled in 50 shares and then another 50 shares right on the trend line I think we're in really good position here for a bounce and I think that's setting up pretty good sold the Dollar Tree Philip Morris that was a great trade PM again what you notice what's the uh, similar or what we call what do we call the, uh, the common denominator a lot of these stocks are we have those multiple indicator lineups you know the underlying trend line the oversold stochastics and you see the reactions off of these consistently and that's you know like I said the important thing is not worrying about how much you make just continue to make it <laughs> you know continue to just surround yourself with quality names I stress this so much because you know I've been through I've been through it you know I've been through it uh, I've been t t trying you know back in the day trying to find new stocks out there that maybe someone hasn't discovered yet Ooh, this one's you know this one looks like it has new technology and it's gonna move up higher and you know and that you might be right but you might be two years early you know, how many times have you believed in something so much and you've held it so long and you finally give up and then it moves? All right, I'm raising my hand right now. And that's, you know, what I fi finally realized, you know, after a while, it's like, wow, there's a formula here, you know? Why try to, you know, make something new when there's something great out there already? If you have a great stock performing, you have an opportunity in that stock and it gives you an opportunity you might as well take it instead of trying to make an opportunity in something. So it's it's you know that's that's key for me now. You know that's why I stress it so much. You you, know, it's, I, you hear it every single day, but you know if I could hear it every single day, I would love it because it would. That's what kind of finally triggers after a while. Um, yeah, you have your days that you're, you're kind of gamble and you get into your your your, your crazy stocks because you know what the hell what you're doing it you're you know but the majority of the time you want to stick to that that great methodology you know something that's get, giving you better results than any other thing other than the random random results you want this to be not a random market you want this to be you know i want to you want to i want to be able to be in coca-cola next time it pulls down to a certain level you know coil stochastics on the 60 i have to take a look at that one i wasn't even paying attention to that but again you could see that maybe coca-cola I'm just looking at this as a, just an example. I didn't expect it to be a, a good setup here, but you can see there's underlying trend line coming up on Coca-Cola right now, and the 200 period moving average. Um, the stochastics they were lined up there. I mean, all these quality stocks continue to show great patterns. Look at this Budweiser. Budweiser, even though it had a tremendous gap up today, I mean that was an earnings play. But each we've traded this one off of these lower trend lines. We traded it off of here. You know, even though it's a gapping stock, you know, we've done well on it because we wait for the, the right signals. The right signals are the convergence of the, the multiple indicators. You know, lower trend lines, the recognizable patterns, and, you know, you know and take it to the limit. So Budweiser going good there. Um, but that's not what we're going to look at. We're going to look at some other thing. I'm just right now reviewing some of the trades and just kind of going back and just saying what we're doing right is the right thing to do. And uh, has nothing to do with market direction or anything, you know, because the last week the market was pulling back a little and we nailed it with some shorts and it was just about, you know, even today, you know, being in the MasterCard and seeing that hold up pretty good. Broadcom, all right, Broadcom, BRCM, there's another trade. Not a big profit on it, a little profit, but a five to seven day pullback. Having rules of the trade, being oversold, starting to see the move back up. All right. That's pretty good. Um, the Visa MasterCard, you know about that. So let's talk about some setups going forward. Kraft, KRFT. It's always my one of my favorites here. Earnings are out after the close tomorrow. What we have here is a great example of what we, I call, we got a lot of these term, terminologies from the HPS setup, with what I call a stochastic price divergence. And the, the price divergence here, normally you see a pullback in the stochastics. You should see that, that same pullback with the uh, stock price as we did here and here and to move up and move up you know this is a great example of that you know from this point to this point stock moved from this point to this point from this point to this point stock moved up you know what I'm saying is as the stochastics move the price should move once you start to see something different from that 
And a great example of that was HLIT. And I'm going to give you a, a textbook example of uh, that right here. This sideways consolidation, this is why we got into the HLIT, is this was a beautiful, beautiful divergence play. Uh, cheaper stock, $6, and look where it is today. You know, I mean, beautiful. But the sideways consolidation versus the pullback, and the, you know, that's key. And that what happens is you start to get the the momentum, the selling momentum here drying up, gets oversold. The next thing you know, the, the move back up here really springs this stock into the next gear and it pushes higher. So what we're looking at now, same thing, craft. Not a, you know, again, my concern with this is earnings. If it wasn't for earnings, I would say, you know, this is a good example of this type of setup. Uh, sideways consolidation as we started to push by even though we did break down here and there was some momentum to the downside for the last four or five days we've been moving down in the stochastics and going sideways on the stock and it's it's given us that signal plus the quality name plus the spin-off um, you know a lot of positives here 60-minute chart we're starting to cross back over the last time we mentioned the entry on this was right here we waited for it and how could you not say that was a great entry? Oversold, wedge pattern, recognizable pattern, boom. Same thing. All right, so, you know, craft still looking great going into um, into tomorrow, other than the earnings out in front of it, which I have to make a decision on Pfizer here. I just noticed that one today doing some scans earlier. Um We have this tight, tight channel line. The upward channels, I love the downward channels and quality like this. I love that that trade right there. You know, that's my go-to trade when I see it set up. Double bottom divergence in a channel also go-to trade. This upward channel tends sometimes to break back down. We've already extended ourselves. I want to bring it to your attention because there's a nice underlying trend line here. We're oversold on the 60, so I don't think I'm going to get into this. I don't know. But I want to bring it to your attention because it is one of the setups that you have multiple indicators lining up on. All right, so Pfizer setting up tomorrow. PKG. Look at that flag. I mean, that's another good flag. It's a little extended here. 60-minute chart. This is one I bring it to your attention as a possible short. We have a little candlestick here starting to form. I like that. All right, it's a recent one, but this one is a little bit better. We're extended here on the oversold on the overbought on the uh, the daily. We're overbought on the 60, starting to roll over on the 60. Um, you know, shorts are not easy in this market, but 54.31 now traded in 53. This is not that far off the highs. I think there is a potential short here in packaging. It's a very strong stock. It's a good stock. It's not something I would normally short, but I do like to, you know, we're talking about. Uh, Risk reward. This is off the 20 period moving average. It's definitely off this trend line. It's off to 50. Candlestick. Possible short. PKG tomorrow. PBR. I, you know what? I can't wait to get more of this. I really can't. Uh, we'll see how this candlestick plays out. Really decided up as a doji pattern or a doji. And um, not a really hammer, which I was looking for. To kind of hammer on the bottom. Where we see that candlestick in a but this is not bad I mean this is our first pullback since we ran off of that lower trend line don't forget we were on top of this trade this is this is something we announced here in day trading radio so it's you know classic HPS setup on a classic crappy stock but when you when you see such a big trend line and this was also lining up on the weekly too and you know everything lining up good here I mean if I was 60 minute chart coming out of that uh, coming out of the wedge pattern I'd like to see this thing continue so you're going to keep pretty pretty much tight $1 stop on it I think not going to let it fall back below here but we actually saw a reaction we actually did get a pullback here and it was like a double bottom area we actually held this level and started moving up yeah, I'd be considering it, adding to it I don't think we're going to get down there I don't think I'm going to hold it that far the hell is that TV show? All right. Well, anyway, uh, definitely focused on PBR. We're going to be watching in the next couple of days. Now, I haven't looked at the valet, but let's take a look at AKAM. 
Alchemy. It's shown great strength. And, you know, Alchemy is something that I like because it deals with the video um, the video industry. You know, a lot of the stuff we use here at Day Training Radio runs off of Alchemy technology. Um, and it's not that far off the highs. You know, we gapped up, pulled back, chopping around. Not a really textbook pattern. There's a couple of trend lines here. Nothing, uh, I can't really, you know, I'd rather see something a little bit better on this, but I have it written down here, Lion Gate Films. I have this one written down also because it's such a great flag here and it's such a great company. But how many zombie films can you do, Lion Gate? I always say that. <laughs> um, you know, we took a short in this back here and then we worked it worked out good and we got out of it because the 60 minutes to casting got a little oversold so we took a profit on that and now right now we're chopping around on the 60 and it's just you know you feel like this one's going to pop to highs i do feel like it but i want to keep an eye on it i think there's a possible short in it down the road so i'm going to keep to start start watching that altria 60-minute chart here getting oversold. We took the Philip Morris off today, which is very similar to this. This one, um, recent earnings out, caused it to gap down. Look at this. I mean, can we identify some good, good setups? Here's a nice one, two, three pattern. Breakout. First rotation. Well, actually, this is the first rotation back down right here. This is the first stochastic channel breakout right here. Uh, we did not a big bounce, though. But the bounce was recognized as getting overbought. And it told you right there, this is not a strong uh, strong bounce at all. Uh, from that point on, we but we're back down into this level and we took out the lows. And this is looking much nicer now. I don't know what we're looking at here. If we're going to get a bounce back up. But there is something brewing here. The daily. Oversold on the daily. Oversold on the 60. 200 period moving average right above us. Uh, some uh, some selling yesterday. Um, I probably like this around the 200 period moving average. Philip Morris PM is a much better uh, pattern, but we took profits into that trend line and we did what was right and it actually sold off after that. So we did the right thing. Still a nice pattern. If it ever got down here, we have this set up on the uh, HPS alerts to alert you in the room if there's a trend line touch here. That's way away, way 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 away. But these channel lines and trend lines. Are activated in the HPS setup, so you don't have to worry about them. Um, Qualcomm. Here's one that we haven't been paying attention to, and I put it on the screen. I figured I'd go over it with you because I wanted to see. Also, I said, "Well, I'm noticing this trend line. I bet if I extend this out, it's probably going to run right into that trend line." And um, you can see we're up against the trend line. We're a little overbought right here. I never had, uh, I just, I don't feel the Qualcomm as much as the next person. I just, I just don't trade it. Even though I feel like, you know, all the talk of the chips and the, and the smartphones, and Qualcomm's a big player in that department. It makes sense to uh, see that. And you can see this gap here. Pivot areas, pivot areas, pivot areas. I mean, Wow. Wouldn't mind to see a pullback a little before this breakout. But Qualcomm setting up right up against this trend line. 60 minute chart. Getting oversold. What we'll to watch it, but I'm not going to trade it. Ah, two sneezes. Just looking at a couple other things here. Tractor Supply Company after the gap down, the, it's the reversal. This is um, what I'm looking at here in Tractor Supply Company is the classic flag setup here. You can see some of the spike. Whenever you see that candlestick spike down, and it kind of lines up with another candlestick spike down, and you actually put those trend lines, and it actually makes that parallel channel. And it's a nice channel there. And then you're looking at a classic flag here. The qu question is, this is where you want to be in. Um... You're oversold on the daily. There's a good shot. We got a breakout here. You know there is a good shot. 
technically, you know, normally I would want to get in on that lower trend line. All right. I missed that opportunity. You'll probably see it on the 60-minute chart. Hmm. Where am I looking here? Let me go back on that daily. Hmm. See it on the daily. 60 is a little bit different here. Oh, there we are. Sorry. I was like uh, drawing a blank there for a second. Anyway, that's what we're looking at right now. So, I mean, this would be ideal down here, and I think we got to set that up as a trend line alert, too. Attractive supply company, a great stock. Did we get down back down here? That's a big move down. That's at least a five, six point move down here. And again, that's on the 60 minute chart. Um, again, the important thing is to remember these setups continue to show you the high probability setups. Especially if you, um, you know, you wait for those. You see the reactions and quality names. You can go back on a stock like this and say, wow, you know, these, uh, these levels that we go back to, just underneath, just a standard level, you know. Eventually, you know, you're probably in a right level. I mean, it might be a couple days of chop in this level, but if you go back to each one of these, I and mean, it's hard to argue against that, right? Is that hard to argue against that move? And again, I, yeah, I'm a buy side player, you know, proud of saying that, you know. Um, it's not set up for me right now. It's not. It might be set up as a short. It might actually break out here. It might actually break out here, which I think it probably could. I mean, we're chopping around here. We're not really breaking back down. We actually could pop a little bit higher. I'll be watching this one. This one, you know, could be at the beginning of a flag. I have a feeling that this is going to break out. I honestly do. Track to supply coming. I actually would like to get back into this one, one you know, soon. So, you know, that's it. That's that's all I want to do. I want to update you on the market condition. I want to show you a couple of good setups in the market. I think going into into next uh, or into the last two days. We had some serious selling at the end of the day. You know, we heard Danny Riley on the uh, closing print saying that we had a, a massive selling balances. And you can see that on the five minute chart on the SPX. We saw that, um, we saw that selling here came in at the end of the day. And we got oversold, so we probably maybe get a little bounce in the morning. But from that point on, we're gonna try to measure out some things and some trades. Sometimes it's great to be in the market. Sometimes it is just good to wait for the next setup and not chase the market, not try to make something happen. For me, classic examples of the deck in that pullback, that perfect flag, the underlying trend line, the sideways choppy action, just not my cup of tea right now. I do like the tractor supply company going into tomorrow. I think that's one of my favorites. I do think Panera is going to run soon, but that one's... Um, You know, it could actually drop down. I mean, it just hasn't done this yet. We're right, right on the trend line. We have a five to seven day pullback. One, two, three, four, five, six. So seven days is usually key for me. And uh, if we get a nice pop back up here, then we're going to be looking golden. Get up at a 170 level. And that's where I'd be watching the stock. So going into the seventh day of the pullback, really classic trend line. Um... So five to seven day pullback on that. So we're looking at that one. So we're looking at Kraft, and we're also looking at Verizon to see if Verizon holds that trend line. Um, Kraft is always one of my favorite. Again, Kraft, I do like it. The Pfizer PFE, just, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get in this or not because of the upward channel. But the upward channel is coming down to that lower trend line. So it's something to watch tomorrow, 29.15, 29.16. And the PBR, we start to see strength build back in the PBR. Probably going to take a bigger position. While we're while we're talking, let's just give you an update on earnings tomorrow, and um, probably won't be able to. You really won't be able to um, take advantage of the earnings in the morning. So what we're going to do is just take a look at the earnings tomorrow after the close. Tomorrow after the close, if I can get this up and running here, I crashed here.
Well, apparently my calendar is not coming up properly. All right, here we are. This is for August 1st. August 1st. Well, this is after the close on August 1st. AIG International. Uh, AIG, American International Group. Let's just take a look at that. Lagging out. All right. Um, I'm just going to run through these. I want to actually bring this over here and show you that what's going on. Activision Vision, uh, Activision Blizzard, ATVI coming out with earnings t uh, tomorrow after the close. Again, this is August 1st. We we'll just scroll down the line. AIG. Um. Ooh, Chef Warehouse. I have some chefs. Chef Warehouse coming out tomorrow. Uh, extra Space Storage, EXR, Extra Space. That's a good performing stock, EXR. I'm not going to take, I haven't looked at it in a while. I'm not going to take anything like that. Um, just going through them. Kodiak, Oil and Gas, KOG. We've been in that one. Kona Grill, Kraft, KRFT. Tomorrow after the close, Leapfrog, LF. Liberty Global, L. B T Y A, great stock, great chart. Liberty Global, LinkedIn, L N K D, L N K D. Is it time for LinkedIn to pay the piper, or does it continue to move higher? I know there's so many LinkedIn. Oh my God, this has been such a, uh, you know, a short crusher. Uh, that's going to be one of the biggest movers here, LinkedIn, either to the upside or to the downside. I guess as good as mine on that one. And um, Max Linear. Open Table, O P E N. Who uses Open Table still? Who has time to go on and make resi Well, some people do that. You know, hon honestly, I shouldn't, shouldn't make fun of that. I'd just rather just call the place and make a resident talk to a human and be done with it in five seconds instead of going through the whole process of getting online. Um, but some people use Open Table. Open Table is actually holding up pretty good $63. God. Um, public storage PSA. Skull Candy S K S K U L Skull Candy Stem Cell Research Research Tessero Refiner T S O Telabs Value Click Weight Watchers International W T T T and Zag Z A G does the covers for the iPads and iPhones Zag. So right 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 now LinkedIn is definitely the big one on the screen. LinkedIn. That's the big one for tomorrow. Kraft Foods also pretty pretty decent one on Kraft Foods. I like it. I probably end up gonna hold this craft. I'm probably gonna and Activision. Those are the three big ones. Just an early update. I think that's it for us. Alright, that's it for us and um we're going to leave that, leave you off with that, and I'll see you tomorrow morning in the markets Thursday. I'm going to be around here uh, tonight, probably around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Maybe we'll review these, some other ch stocks um, in the room. So if you happen to catch this video and happen to uh, get that announcement, not guaranteed. I'm not put, making an official, but I do feel the uh, I do feel the need to uh, kind of do a little more research here. So I might do it with you guys. All right, that's it. I'll talk to everyone tomorrow.